Robin and um, we are having a lot of warfare. So I guess this video might be one that's going to count. We are doing, we are doing a series on how God healed me. And today I want to talk about the big question. Where is the refuge? We do pray for a physical place of refuge and it would be absolutely wonderful. We pray for it. We plan for it. We put our feet in motion. We're going to put our feet on our prayers to get that done. It would be wonderful to have a prayer retreat, uh, a place where we could go away and just spend time with God. And also sometimes some of us just need to get away. That is very real. That is very important. However, that is not where the refuge is. Um, a person could come there and if they don't truly find refuge, that physical place, even in isolation, is the only not going to do them all the good that they need. The refuge is not there. Since SRA is mind control programming, then the refuge is in the deprogramming, the healing, which is possible, does happen. A lot of that has to do with the fact that we were programmed to not get better, programmed to feel, programmed to behave erratically and un like um, unstable in the beginning of the process. But if we calm down and follow a few basic steps that God gave me, then it can happen. It does happen. Most of the time, we are only, when we react to what we're going through, we're only um, reacting to our programming. And unless we get rid of it, that's all we'll ever have. The good news is that God is really good at deprogramming. He already knows everything. I can't tell any of these survivors why these things happened to them, why they were allowed to do it, where God was when that happened to them. I can't explain all this. I can't give them closure. However, he can and did for me. A lot of times we just feel like we're over our heads. Well, wait, all the time an SRA survivor feels like they're over their head because we are over our head. This is not going to go away on our own. It is not going to, um, a, a, a deliverance minister is not going to pull this out of you. Their process is good and valid, but you can go to one right after the other. And it's only going to get you so far because you have to go deeper with God for this one. Give yourself to God fully. You have to absolutely have had enough. And that took me way too long. I hope and pray each person just flips a switch and gets to where they've had enough and just completely surrender to God. That's the only, that's the first step and the only chance that you have. After that, you do need to change, but repentance or change, once you commit to it and begin it, becomes a contract in which blocks uh, demonic attack. A lot of times we have to pray for not only forgiveness of our sins and begin to change what we're doing. We also have to do that for every part of us, things that we don't remember. So when I pray for repentance, I pray for forgiveness for what I did, knowing and unknowing. And that covers you. We have to stop going back to our old vomit, our old habits and opening up demonic doors and then getting attacked. It's not that simple for an SRA survivor and we end up back and back into it because we're not deprogrammed yet and God knows that. But keep moving forward. Um, at that point, I always tell people to stand tall, stand tall, get off the ground, stop groveling, Stop feeling like this is never going to go away. It is going to go away. After a person gets into the contract of repentance, you may still be dealing with problems. Even today, I have tons of flaws. I have lots of things I have to repent for. I have every day something that I realize I need to change about myself. But a lot of that is like um, things that I thought were, were bad about me or, or, or flaws. Uh, are not flaws, like the fact that God made me defiant for a reason. A reason that I didn't understand most of my life, and I was harder on myself for that than I should have been. Once you start spending time in prayer, these things become evident to you that not everything that you think is wrong is bad. 
is, is really bad. And sometimes things that you think are good are not good. It's not all the basic biblical standards, which you have to do that too, but it's a lot of digging deep so that you can get in there and let God form you the way he needs to because he's the almighty and he loves you and he loves me. And it's both in a way like we're the most important, but we're not more important than anybody else. It's the most amazing thing. And I don't see why anyone would not choose that. Then once you get to that point, you can make sure that God is completely control of everything you remember, what, when, and how. Knowing this is going to become incredibly healthy throughout the rest of the process and the rest of your life. Pray for a time period where you can go into complete seclusion and prayer. And I do know that some people have small children and two jobs and a spouse and sometimes the spouse is abusive or sometimes they're wonderful and you have all these complexities of, in, in, of situations where you can't think that you can't have four hours of prayer a day. But even if it meant costing you your sleep, which sleep is important, get your sleep. But even if it costs something like that, you still need to do this. So what I did was I prayed and made sure that I had a four hour block of time a day. Pray and ask if four hours are for you, if six hours is for you, if for two hours or one hour. That's specifically what God told me and that's what worked for me. But it is a significant part of your 24 hour period and you're probably gonna have to pray for God to open that up. But once you pray for that, all you have to do is sit back and watch him put it in place. Because while we struggle for time for him, he never struggles to make time for us. He always shows up. During this, don't get distracted because the enemy will come after you and you're still going to be reacting to a lot of programming. A lot of the fears that we have, is, it, 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 it's all programming. If you are a child of God, you are under protection and no matter what happens to you, you're going to be okay. You're right where he needs you. Once you've prayed for him to be in control and you get your time period, or really even before that, as those flashes are coming through the day and you're, you, it's overwhelming, do not run and tell people. I mean, not just the general public. I'm not saying don't tell your spouse and I'm, I'm not saying don't tell anybody, but make sure that someone you're talking to is SRA knowledgeable. Do not start talking at work about remembering, and I don't want to give anybody flashbacks, but these things, because they're unthinkable, and if you think you can't handle it, they can't handle it either. So they're going to immediately click you off as, as crazy or whatever derogatory term. They're going to stamp you and set you aside. It's best to stay calm, still spend time with your kids, play, have fun, laugh. And you can do that once you learn how to just file away those memories for later. You know, and it's okay during this to take a break from family. That can get complicated if you're married and it's your spouse. It can get complicated if you live with family, but all of these details can be put into place if that's what's best for you because if you put him in control of when, where, and how this takes place, you won't have that much of a problem. Let him have control. We have forever been discredited. And a lot of that is that we reacted to the programming that caused us to discredit ourselves. It's okay to be off. I have no doubt that everybody in my life that I work with and the friends that I had knew something was going on with me. But I somehow had early on given all of this to God so I was able to function normal enough that I didn't get classified and dismissed and rejected, which just adds on. I also did not go to deliverance ministers. God bless them all. They do a great job in a lot of ways, but they really don't help SRA people that much. They don't because it takes, um, it takes self-deliverance. It takes passive deliverance where you sit with God only because no human being, me or any other other survivors, no one is going to be able to explain this to you. You're not going to find a human savior walking this earth unless Jesus walks in the room. So 
once you get to that point, it's, it's not hard to just function normally. God was so good to me. I, I, I don't even know how to wrap my head around it. But when I was first starting to have these periods of time where I would just go into like a bubble, uh, I, I call it a bubble a lot, um, and and just just sit with him. And I learned how I would I would always start with gratefulness when you're praying. Always always do that. I know sometimes we whine and cry to him. I do it too, but we really should approach him and nothing but respect. And I would lay there and say, thank you, God, for my toenails. Thank you, God, for my toes. Thank you, God, for the tops of my feet. Thank you, God, for the bottoms of my feet. And I would go all the way up my body. And then eventually it was like he would just like pull me into somewhere else. And I was really with him. And at that point, I felt like no one could ever see me. No one could ever touch me. I regressed here and there. I'm not perfect, but um, something um, I did is I worried uh, quite a bit when I realized that the way that the, the programming, the SRA was happening to me is that I was being, as a child, removed from my bed. And I began, and, I, and that did happen in my early 20s too. So, so when I realized this, I began, I just for three nights, I just, I was just completely thrown off. And I was absolutely full of fear and God let me sit there. He let me sit there and hurt and sit there and hurt. And then when I said, okay, you got this. I forgot you got this. He just took that fear from me and I've never felt it again. I never feel anybody come and get me a night, even though it has been, I, I tried. Always remember that you were a follower. Um, and, and always keep, always keep that in focus that what is happening to you is him doing it. He is bringing this to your mind. He's giving you the ability to file it away and then go into a deep state of prayer with him. And then it took a while. Um, and I hope it doesn't take you as long. But eventually, he was bringing me to my flashes. And I was able to see it, process it. And yes, it hurt to see it. But he would also tell me why certain relatives, each one of my parents, why they did that. I understand why the abusers are abusing. I understood their perspective and that helped me in the effort to get it off my heart, like to forgive. I, 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 I'm not condoning it, but I don't have that same um, hatred and, and, and disdain for them that was making me sick. So, um, in telling people, there is a strategy that I learned, and I've heard other people talk about it too. Sometimes you just have to tell them, I am a follower of Christ. I have some healing to do. That's true. I have some healing to do, and I'm spending a period of time every day in heavy prayer working on myself with the Lord. Now, a believer is going to you know, you can tell them it's just private for now, or if you want to, it depends on who they are, but a believer is going to leave you alone. A non-believer may, um, give you a little pushback with it because they don't understand why you would do that. However, only a, an abuser is going to try to block you. So anyway, uh, I hope that's not too much at once. It's, it's been a hard road getting here. Anyway, you guys, lots of love, lots of hugs, and um, we'll do another one here soon.